Um, so we're here with Dr. Mihai Nadine, and he's uh, graciously uh, is going to meet with us and give us some of your perspectives about public art. So could you introduce yourself first, please, Professor? Mihai Nadine, Professor ATEC. Good afternoon. So we've been interviewing a series of professors here at ATEC and, 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 and elsewhere to try, as we're studying for this broad topic of public art, which you have a tremendous amount of background and expertise in. And uh, we'd like to, I'd like to mine that. Okay. So could you tell us a little about your background in public art and First of all, to, to repeat what many people heard from me many times, I'm not an artist, therefore I cannot point you to this is my piece and it is at this or that corner. However, the notion of public art is something that was very much on my mind for a long time because I'm coming from one of the most beautiful cities in the world, in Romania, someplace in the Carpathian Mountains. The whole city is public art in the sense that over three, four, five hundred years, every corner becomes a work of art, whether you like it or not. And in that city, and that's the image that I prepared for you, in that city, during the uh, communist regime when I worked there, I discovered that the old fortress of the town had one of the bastions, as they, it, it was called, that looked almost like an Elizabethan theater. And you can see the image here. And at that time, I brought to the attention of my fellow citizens in that town, we have this beautiful place, let's do something with it. You couldn't do anything for many reasons, the majority of them being political. You know the regime did not want people to get in such a place, but come closer and, 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 and look at this thing. Uh, when, when, when I discovered it, yeah, nobody was there but birds and, you know, what birds leave behind. And recently, only, I think, four or five years ago, they even had a performance, a Shakespeare performance there. So, if I can claim some credit, I would claim I'm the author of that discovery of the theater. That is for me public art, by the way. And that informs even my understanding of public art is. I will uh, probably upset you telling you that the piece of public art that we have here in the backyard that uh, ATEC, the Love Jack, uh, is one of the examples of what I don't call public art. It's decorative and I don't care for anything that is meant to be a decorative piece. We decorate so many things. For me, public art is a locus of interaction. That's where people meet and interact. If that function is not accomplished, forget it. We had in the old city that I mentioned to you, uh, big monuments to Lenin, Stalin hanging in the middle. Nobody would care to go there. To do what? Yeah? But when, 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 when you think about public art, I, I repeat, I think about the place where there is a very good reason for people to meet and not only to talk to each other, that's the easy thing. You, you, you can have other possibilities, you can go in other places. But the interaction can be very, very interesting. For instance, during my sabbatical, I had the chance to visit, give some lectures in the uh, uh, Baltic uh, republics of Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia. And I was there when they were celebrating the liberation from the Soviet regime. Public art, talk about the fact that people put together, one after the other, holding hands, a two and a half miles long chain. That is a public event. 
that is for me where these things make sense. For me, they do not make sense if there are simple objects there on which the pigeons will come and do what they do with such a pleasure, no matter how good or bad the artist is. You can put Michelangelo out and the pigeons have no respect and why should they? Yeah, But Michelangelo did not conceive his pieces to be put in a, 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 a marketplace. He conceived the pieces for a totally different thing. So if you ask me again about public art, I will come with you to this building that I still consider a, 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 an example of a, a, a beautiful failure. Uh, it is a beautiful failure because during the time when I had a chance to interact with those who conceived the building, I explained to them why this building should be an interactive building, which means all the walls that we have here, which happen to be very expensive, this is very expensive stuff. These should have been interactive surfaces. The skin of the building that looks outside should have been an interactive surface so that the students in the building could project to the world outside, to the campus, what they are doing. This inter interview as we have it now, a discussion that belongs to academia, could have been projected on the wall. And if you have 500 people who want to see it, five. If you have nobody who wants to see it, it's fine too. But there are so many things that are happening on a constant basis, especially in the School of Art and Technology, yeah, that to have this whole building as an interactive display would have been one, one hell of a, of, of, of a statement regarding who are we and what do, you want, do we want to do. Uh, that's why when I heard you want to give people information about such places, you saw quite a number of uh, uh, very interesting examples that were put on the web in which they faked a spontaneous event in which there is somebody playing a violin and the kid comes and puts five cents there and then comes the next, you know, as though they did not perform it. I want that to happen in real life and not to be staged. I want to be able to talk about uh, events like this on this fabulous campus. The campus is becoming more and more fabulous because it has all those green spaces and, you know, it, it was helped a lot. You can do enormous uh, things in this public space. And I, I would really do that. So that's where I, that's where I stand. Interesting. That's where I stand. It's probably not your orthodox view of let's create a nice piece that we put in a da 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 and we put on a pedestal and people will go around and will no. So in your really in understanding or de description of public art, you really need a social interactivity. Uh, I yeah, need community. interaction. If it's not interaction, in my opinion, it has uh, zero value. Uh, to add to cities, to add to a campus, to add to a school, uh, a decorative object, that's not for me public art. Can that interactivity doc be both physical and virtual? Sure, and it should be, and it should be. Th think about the fact that here, what's the hotel, the Omni Hotel downtown? They are an example of trying something in that respect. And I was very happy, very, very happy when Andrew Scott got involved with that project. And did the projection that is, mapping. That is an example of the things that can happen. But if we're honest, I would be even happier if our students here would hack into that wall <laughs> and would project on that wall some of their work. That is where I stand. Interesting. I, I know that wh whatever I'm telling you, you know, um, some people will say, oh boy, let's not get into that. That's the only place where creativity starts. Because if you put that work there only, only as a display, look at the great artists that did yeah. this and that. For that, I have enough uh, uh, time to go to the, to the museum. Yeah. Yeah? But 
as a place of interaction. I want even artists to meet with the rest of the population and interact there. And given the fact that there is a lot of interactive media, that can be fabulous. Really, it can be fabulous. Uh, I had an occasion, I mentioned the Baltic Republics, to see how using the cell phones, they were able to, so to say, drive an image on one of the big, very big surfaces in, in, in town in, 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 in Tallinn. It was, an, it was an amazing thing because you saw the people really painting together with light on some surfaces. Fabulous, fabulous. So art, art should really be for the public. It's not, it, obviously it is an artifact of cultural history and value. Absolutely. But, and, and, but it's and, also in the, the, the process of becoming also, right? Sure, absolutely. But the art is changing. And the major change in, in art today is we're going a little away from the medieval notion, which is a late notion of the, art, the artist is a genius, the artist put on a pedestal. Mm. We are really going uh, to, to a moment when art becomes uh, a component of people's lives. Mm. And in some ways, everybody is an artist. In some ways, everybody is an That's artist. That's an exciting vision, you know. isn't it? And uh, it is exciting because everyone is an artist. doesn't mean that, oh, I expect my work to be at the Museum of Modern Art. That's not what we are talking about. We are talking about a very simple fact. There is no person in the world who is not talented. Give every person a context to express that talent. And that's for me public art. Stays, it's pretty uh, far away from what you had in mind. And I don't even know whether you can no. do anything with it. But No, that's, that's right on target actually. That's um, where I stand. Way, Joyce, do you have any questions? We might go in a direction. This amazing gentleman here. She's a shy person. I, <laughs> I remember her. Well, was I able to get from you more than five words during the whole semester, or they were seven words? I was counting them. Aslan, do you have any questions? Poor Asmanas, don't put her under more pressure. About, I would like to visit some places to see actual public art around the campus because our project is to, to support public art in like around the Richards and Dallas. But do you have any um, su suggestion of like which place would be? No. <laughs> it's a good question. So, like, when I, I, I'm assuming, Doc, that I go around, International Week's coming up, and there's a lot of our students who are practicing performative stuff for that celebratory week. I, I guess you would consider that public art. In, uh, in many ways, dance. especially if you would be able and willing to integrate in what the students on our campus are doing with people what do on other campuses. I would love to see people on other campuses uh, create things that can be projected here on, 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 on our displays. That would be a fabulous thing to happen. <coughs> so a collaboration of other sure, universities sure, sure, and sure. Uh, a sharing of that Sure. That content uh, remotely, even? Yeah, remotely, absolutely. Yeah. As I, as I said to you, I would love our, our, ours to uh, uh, hack not only the Omni, there are other buildings in the world, many, which have these interactive displays, which have interactive skins. Go do it. Go do it. It's, it's fabulous. So, 
Doc, uh, some of us are, one of our classes, we are involved in producing projection mapping lighting effects for the, a concert coming up in less than a month downstairs in our beautiful auditorium. We Would know you about consider that. that public art? That is a very difficult to answer question. It would be public if you could get that concert really uh, very broadly uh, 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 made available to other people in real time. Would it have to be real time or if we I would, video I, would, I care about real time real because time. I care only about uh, real uh, events. I ask her about the recital, yeah? I can go and buy my CD and listen to the music at home. That's canned food. I like fresh food. I want to make it. I want to taste it as I make it. Too much salt, too much salt, no problem. That's what I'm making, yeah? That's why a concert like this can be recorded. And probably it's going to be recorded and you name it. But to experience it live as it takes place, that is for me the art. The canning of art is for me not art. It's canned art. Great point. Well, if you ever regret that you wanted to see me and hear my... Uh, uh, opinions, that's the moment. Okay. Uh, wow. Uh, do you have any other things you'd like to share with us? Any personal anecdotes or stories or did, have you uh, had any personally, you know, profound experiences? You, you told us about this wonderful uh, theater in Romania are in your lifetime have you just had your breath taken away by any um, many many such things and that's you why share any of those with us? Many, many such things and that's why I, I care to give you the the example of this uh, little theater when I say many such things I was in Barcelona at a time when they were pretty close to the Easter time. When people meet in public places and they all know the tune and know the rhythm and dance together. That is for me an example of uh, 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 such public, uh, public art. Because you are part of it and at the same time it contributes to, to your to your own, if you want, education, to your con continuation. Uh, that, that was for me one, one of those events I will, I will uh, really uh, not forget for a, for a very long time. But by the same token, I will not forget back in some Romanian villages at the celebration, to give you an example, the celebration of uh, Christmas. The church is on the hill the peasants, that's how they are called. You know, here you would call farmers or ranchers. The peasants go up the hill having in their hands candles. Yeah. And at midnight, the whole thing explodes, so to say, in light. But we're not talking about the lights that you have today. We're talking about the time when there was a pretty dark Romania and you had this explosion of light and you had this almost idea, you know, you are freed for something. That is, that is one of those things. But by the same token, if you remember it, probably you don't because you are all too young for that. Once upon a time there was the so-called happening art in the United States, here but not only. Happening is such a form of uh, public art. Mm -hmm. And the new happenings organized through the, through the uh, media, through the social media, uh, <coughs> are faking it. It would be nice if, if, if those things would be, would be for real. 
So if the the word of mouth, the the, the virality sure, sure, of the information sure, sure. of we're going to get together was more face to face. Absolutely, you would think and, it would be more was, authentic. It was face to face to the extent that if I convinced you that it's a nice thing, you would come. If I didn't, you would not come. So it it, it is a kind of a vote with your feet. Feet. Yeah. yeah, you are there or you are not there. And there, there there were many such such events that were pretty unique events. And you want to be a part of a unique event. Uh, the decorative piece that we have here near artificial grass. That's a no-no, come on. It's really a no-no. Artificial grass and something called love jack. And nobody ever looks at it. There's no relation to it. Have you, have you noticed the amazing thing that the most important uh, artwork in our building is that inscription, don't touch the artwork? <laughs> <laughs> the most important in the whole thing? I, 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 I simply cannot believe that. <laughs> so we're, we're sitting here, and I, I, I will let you go because I just love listening to to Dr. Nadine. Uh, we're sitting here in your ant anti lab, the, and we know that anticip anticipation is one of your lifelong studies. Uh, would you care to just make, give us some final comments about how maybe how anticipation plays in to public art? I did not want really to push it in my direction because otherwise it, it starts sounding like a, like a lecture. But uh, authentic works of art are all anticipatory and they are all inviting uh, to discovery. They all want to make you part of the discovery process. Uh, canned uh, food does not make you discover anything. Uh, if you make it together, you are in the process of discovering the others and discover yourself. And in, 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 in this sense, maybe some of the things that I mentioned to you, yeah, are all examples of anticipation because I did not know that in, in uh, Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania at that time, they were celebrating the freedom from the big neighbor, okay? And when you saw those two and a half miles of people forming a human change, the anticipation is in the action in which those people wanted to show we are, we are really the border. Mm -hmm. Nobody will come, no tank will come and get over us and, and, and get away with our freedom. Mm -hmm. So anticipation is, is, is probably mm -hmm. that, that which gives life to public art. A piece like the one that I complain about this one, but forget it, the, the, the Love Jack has, has no anticipation. It's, it's, it's a dead mm. piece. Decorative uh, art has no anticipation. In it. They are pretty much dead art. You need decoration for many things, but public art should not be decoration, but a living experience, really. Well, Dr. Team, thank care. you so much. Be so good to yourself. Awesome. Appreciate it. Be good to yourself. Don't be so shy. <laughs>